maybe one of the only places uh, where the popular culture talks about this kind of stuff is on Facebook anymore, um, which is, says something about popular culture, but I think it also says something about the subject. So here's what it is, right? This little thing comes up and says, can you solve this correctly? It's called a viral math problem. Just, I don't know who it was on my Facebook feed that this came up the other way. This problem has the internet stumped. Do you know the right answer? Why do you think this viral math problem is stumping the internet? What is the actual heart of the issue here? Why is this a tricky problem that would stump people on the internet across the world? Yeah. So one observation is, do we divide first? Or do we multiply? Now, where are you seeing multiplying in this expression? Um, like between the two and the yeah, so that's the, one of the first sources of the stumping here is that there's this little hidden multiplication sign in between the two and the parenthesis right here. Um, and so both division and multiplication are present in this expression. And according to the order of operations, what does the order of operations uh, tell us about these various operations? OK, right. So there's, there's a part of what can help us to resolve this ambiguity. Um, we talked a little bit about this last Wednesday. Uh, because of keep change flip, right, which is something we worked on with fractions, because of keep change flip, we know that every division that we could ever need to do can be changed into a multiplication by flipping the second factor, by flipping the divisor. Right? Um, and so that means that, really, for the purposes of the order of operations, there's no difference between m and d. There are operations that are the same thing, because we can trade one of them for the other whenever we want to. Therefore, they should have the same precedence as one another. Same thing with addition and subtraction. We could flip subtraction for addition by adding the opposite, by adding the additive inverse. Um, so one solution to the, the problem here, and it directly addresses the, the issue that you raised, which is do we multiply first or do we divide first, one way to address this is to change all division to multiplication instead. And if I do that, then at least I don't have to worry about the question written here in green. Do I multiply first or do I divide first? So if we follow that breadcrumb trail here, uh, then we'll just turn this division sign into a multiplication sign instead. But I do that at the cost of having to flip something. But now the question is, what do I flip? Two. Do I flip the two? Or what's the other possibility? One more source of ambiguity here. One of the problems with using this somewhat archaic symbol for division is that it leaves open the question of how much stuff after that symbol are we really trying to divide by? Do we mean that we're dividing by 2, as it would suggest if we're just flipping the 2 into its reciprocal to trade division for multiplication? Or are we saying that we should divide by this entire quantity which follows? the division symbol. Right? Maybe we're dividing by this whole thing, or maybe we're only supposed to divide by the two. And in principle, that could make a pretty big difference. So for that reason, we almost never use division signs, because we use instead a different symbol that has a grouping function sort of built right into it. So what we're trying to do here is make the decision. We're trying to, again, extract meaning out of this expression that we don't necessarily know what that meaning is up front. But the question is, if I rewrite this using a fraction bar, which is the usual tool that we use when thinking about division, because it resolves this ambiguity, on the one hand, we could think of the 2 as being the thing which we're dividing by. Or on the other hand, and again, the original wording of this expression leaves this unclear, maybe we're dividing by all of this and not just by the 2. So that's the trouble that we can get in when we use the division symbol, which is why we don't use the division symbol very often. We only use it to have this conversation and to stump our Facebook friends, basically, or rather, to make our Facebook friends feel stupid. Right? 
because that's what these memes are about. So most Facebook memes that say the internet is stumped on this or 99% of people get this wrong, the entire intent of those memes are to make you feel stupid, right? To make you think that your Facebook friend has the correct answer and some magic wisdom and that you don't. Um, that's all these stupid Facebook memes are about. Um, but the legitimate conversation for us is which one of these two is really meant? Um, and then we have to decide. Because if I decide that what was really meant is this, I'm probably going to get a different answer when I evaluate this than if I decide that this was really what was meant. And in fact, these are the two routes that we would travel if instead of changing the division to multiplication, we had just chosen instead to either do this operation first or do this operation first. If I did this operation first and then I did the division, then I'm over on the right-hand side. Whereas if I did the division first and then I did the multiplication afterwards, now I have the expression I have over here. And so those are the two sides of this controversy, right? the, two, the two different warring factions that make this a viral math problem, so to speak. So let's look at what happens in each of those cases uh, and see what the two possible answers are that if you look in the comments underneath this meme on your Facebook wall, there are going to be people arguing over whether it's one of these or the other. Uh, so starting with the one over here, if we interpret this to mean that the 2 is being divided by, in other words, that when I change this for multiplication, I trade the 2 out for its reciprocal, um, and then end up with 6 times a half times quantity 1 plus 2, how do we end up evaluating that? What do I do first in this expression? According to PEMDAS, we first want to look inside parentheses and then work our way out. And inside these parentheses is only one operation, this addition. So that would be the first thing that we do. We would do 1 plus 2 equals 3. I'm going to kind of move vertically here. 6 divided by 2, and then inside these parentheses I'll have 3. OK. And now that I have only a single number inside these parentheses, the parentheses are no longer really necessary as a grouping symbol. Instead, how are we going to interpret what these parentheses are telling us to do? Multiplication, exactly. So I'm just going to forget if those parentheses are there, and I'm going to trade that out for 6 divided by 2 times 3, like that. Or again, if we were using keep change flip, as I was setting you up to do up here, we could see this instead as 6 times a half times 3. That, again, underscores that all these operations, multiplication and division, if we put them on a common footing, now the order of operations doesn't make a distinction between whether I do this multiplication first or this multiplication first, because it doesn't matter. Multiplication has a property called associativity that says if I'm multiplying three numbers together, it doesn't matter which pair of them I multiply together first. I'm going to get the same answer. So we can either multiply 1 half by 3 and then multiply the result by 6. I don't like that way, because I don't like multiplying a half by 3 because it's a fraction. Or I can multiply 6 by a half first, which seems nicer and then multiply that by 3. So let's do it that way. 6 times a half is going to give me 3, and 3 times 3 is going to give me 9. So if I interpret this viral math problem in the way on the left here, then 9 is going to be the answer that I get to. Why? Because I'll do this division first. 6 divided by 2 is going to give me a 3. Um, actually, sorry, first I would have done 1 plus 2. But then I would have divided 6 by 2, 3 multiplied by 3, give me 9. So that's what I get if I do it this way. If, on the other hand, I take this division and I interpret it to mean that I'm dividing the whole quantity which follows it into 6, then how does that affect my logic? What's the first thing I'm going to do in this expression on the right? Still parentheses. Still parentheses, exactly. Right. As long as there's still a set of parentheses, um, I should try and go as far inside of those grouping symbols as I can. Now, the hidden secret here is that this fraction bar, and this is why fraction bars are nice, it also has a grouping function associated with it, right? It groups everything that's above it into a group. It also groups everything that's underneath it into a group, which doesn't matter at our first step, but it's going to matter in a second. So the first thing we'll do is go all the way to the inside of the innermost grouping and do the operation that's there. 1 plus 2, that's going to give me 3. So again, working sort of vertically here, I'll have 2 times 3 underneath the fraction, like this. And then again, the parentheses aren't really serving a grouping function anymore, so we can just get rid of them and make the multiplication. Um, and now here is, where the th here is where our process is different. Because now, what's the next step that I'm going to do in this uh, expression? 
Am I going to divide next or am I going to multiply next? I'm going to multiply. Yeah. Two times three. Because this fraction bar is grouping that multiplication together to make it take precedence over this division. Right? If it were not for this fraction bar grouping those two things together, we would have this instead. And the multiplications, 6 by a half and a half by 3, those would have the same precedence. But the fraction bar is giving this multiplication precedence. So this multiplication will happen first. 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. And 6 divided by 6 is going to give me 1. So indeed, it matters how we extract meaning out of this viral math problem expression. Right? If I extract meaning out of this division symbol by saying that we're really only dividing by the 2, and that everything else sort of stands apart from that, then this is how we're really interpreting that using a fraction bar. And when I do all of that arithmetic using the same order of operations as you're using, we end up with the number 9 as our answer. But if I interpret this division symbol to mean that everything which follows it is grouped together into the div uh, divisor of this division problem, that leads me to a multiplication of 2 by 3, which takes precedence over the division by 2, and which leads me to a different answer. And so people in the comments of this meme are going to be arguing over whether the correct answer is 1 or whether the correct answer is 9. Uh, and the problem is, of course, that this symbol makes it impossible to be right. That's the other reason this can be viral. Because we can't know somebody who uses this division sign. Maybe they did mean we're only dividing by 2. Or maybe they did mean we're dividing by the whole thing. Without any additional insight into the person writing this expression, it's impossible to say. And so if you want to be the one charging into your Facebook comments and saying, you're all wrong, you have my blessing to do so. You could also charge it and say, you're all right, and you would also have my blessing to do so. Or probably the best idea of all is just to stay out of the Facebook comment war. Um, take it to YouTube. That's where all the good comment wars happen. 